this video, I'm in Infinite Campus and it's defaulted to the Control Center, but for the video we're going to show today concerning how to send out uh, voice or text messages, we're going to jump down to the Message Center. And typically this defaults to where you're viewing messages sent to you, but in this case we're going to create a new message that you'll be the author of. And right now looking at this page, most teachers are familiar with this screen and have sent messages before with Infinite Campus Messenger. The only part that's new is that we've now added voice and text. So I'm going to come up here and just kind of run through all the defaults to make sure we're all on the same page. But in class message, you've got the option of doing one of these three um, types of messages. We're going to use class message. It should default to you as the user, but you may find that your school has got um, some type of a group set up with all teachers or or others using um, a certain group together. We'll assume that user is good enough. Template, you may have some templates already made, uh, but for today I'm just going to leave it at new. And now the delivery details. Uh, up until now, again, we've only had inbox and email. We know that inbox is not an email inbox, but this is the infinite campus parent or student portal inbox. Email is whatever email address we have on file. And now we're going to be able to choose voice and text. So notice that up until now, when I have these two only selected, I've got delivery date and inbox time. But as I choose voice, it now adds a new box here for what time do I want the voice and text to go out. I can make those the same or different. Additionally, it has now put an, a phone number that's going to go out on the caller ID. If I click on text, nothing changes here, but it does add something down at the bottom that we'll get to in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and leave both of those checked and scroll down. At this point, I can give it a message subject, and I always like to add on there uh, the last name of the teacher. In this case, I'm logged in uh, as a teacher at Apollo. So I'm going to last name, colon, you know, welcome back. And I could, at this point, choose either record a message or add a WAV file. And I'm going to show you how to do both of those so that you know how to do it. Uh, the first one assumes that you don't have any way to record WAV files on your computer already. It's going to let you do that um, through their system. So when I click on record a message, it's going to open up this new um, window. Uh, it's a new uh, a tab entirely, and it's ready for me to either hit refresh um, or excuse me, record, or I can refresh it and clear it and, and do this over again. Uh, I'm not going to take the time to do this right now while I'm recording. I'm going to hit pause on the recording, go do the recording, and then come back and show you um, the after result. But do know that when you come to this page, it's just going to ask you to dial one of three numbers, not all three of them, and enter a PIN, uh, and then it will walk you through the prompts of recording your message. So I'm going to hit pause now, make my recording, and come back to you. All right, so I just went over to my phone and called in with the first number using the pen. It asked me to save my recording, and when I was finished at the pound key, it asked me, do I want to keep it, re-record it, or save it? I chose save it, um, and all of a sudden on this screen, almost instantaneously, uh, the screen now shows this section right here that we didn't see well ago. Uh, so it just gives it a time. Uh, if, I, if I do multiples, it's going to show multiples there. Uh, in this case, it gives me two download options. I'm going to choose this one in a minute, and a play option. So I can play it. Hi, this is Mr. May, and this... And so, if I, again, I've already listened to it, but if I think it's great, I'm going to go with this one. I'm going to choose download. And you see right down here, it is downloading to my downloads folder. Looks like, you know, 3200 uh, is the opening characters that I'm going to look for in a minute. So I'm going to close that. And if I come back over into this screen, this option that said Add WAV File, now it's going to let me look at my downloads for voice files, or WAV files rather, and that's the one I had. I choose Open, and it is now my attached message. Now, let me kind of stop my, my walkthrough here and just kind of give this little side note. Um, I went through and recorded this one message using their built-in record a message feature. However, I could have gone to a different website. There's a number of websites that you can just record WAV files online. Um, I could have saved a dozen different messages all in advance and, and named them uh, accordingly. And so if later in the year I have a, 
um, an occurrence where I want to send a message home that says, hey, don't forget this Friday is a big test. Um, you need to be studying. Well, I could have recorded that and many others well ahead of time and just picked the one that I wanted. So if you ever feel like you're going to be needing to do this in a hurry, you might want to preload some of your work, front load some of your work by recording them ahead of time. But in the, again, in this case, uh, for, our, for our demonstration, that's plenty. Uh, if I wanted to add an attachment, this would be like a PDF document or a brochure or a flyer or something like that um, that went along with this recording. I could do that there. Um, keep in mind, anytime you do the attachment, um, you know, sometimes there's formatting. Sometimes it, it does or doesn't attach well. Um, so, so those are fine, uh, but I would just suggest you stick with PDF if you're going to do an email attachment. Uh, the message of the body, uh, I'm just going to, you know, throw in some junk here. Uh, but you'll want to make sure that there's always um, a salutation at the end that includes your name and how you want them to get back with you. So, again, they're going to get this email address from infinite.campus unless you change that. I suggest you don't change it. I suggest you leave it like it is, and then you just say, please respond to Mr. May and, um, and leave your email address there. A uh, phone number only if you want to. You can leave the school's phone number or something like that. Um, but make sure they know who it's from. Otherwise, they're not going to know which teacher sent it. Uh, I'm not going to get into these tools right here. That's a whole other training that you could get involved in. Uh, but it does let you do some formatting and even let you add in some campus fields. Um, if I scroll down here to the text message. Uh, it recommends not exceeding 140 characters, so I suggest you stick with that. Uh, as you may or may not know, there are, there are some um, texting providers that let you do more than 140, but some still don't, so it'd probably be wise to stay under that 40 limitation. So again, here you're going to throw in um, a message. This one needs to be stuck with 140, even though this one might have been much, much more. Um, this is going to be what they get in an email or read to them, this is what's going to come on their text message if they chose text above. And yes, you can do both simultaneously. As I click next, it's going to ask me which groups I want to send this message to. I might want to say I want every single person in my second nine weeks, or maybe it's just a specific course. Just choose something. And then down here, you're going to choose who's going to get this. Either their messenger contacts, and this might be um, parent, guardian, uh, whoever's listed as their contacts, and or the student themselves. I'll choose next. And this is going to give me the breakdown of who and where and when. So this was created on this date. It's going to be delivered at 129 for voice, both voice and email text, portal, all four of the above. This is going to tell me how many um, contacts are going to get it. This is going to give me the breakdown. If it, Where it says no device is zero, um, I, it uses the word devices, but really we're talking about how many contacts are there. So if you see that there's multiple contacts, that means you're going to have a kid who has um, no parent getting notified uh, if it was the parents that you checked. This is going to tell you the, the breakdown of where they go, either their parent portal process inbox, an email, or the combination of voice and text. And that will give you a little breakdown of what it's going to look like. It's not very fancy. It's not meant to look fancy. It just gets the message across. Now, if I were to click send right now, uh, it would go out. Uh, I'm obviously not going to send that during this training and confuse all those parents. What I do want to show you is this review recipients. If I click on that, uh, and yes, I've got things blurred out, but just let's use your imagination. Here is an email address, and here is a phone number according to the student's name. Uh, this shows me which class they're in, okay? But this information right here um, is going to be who all gets it. What The reason I'm showing you this is you want to look and see, do I ever see a student who has no contacts over here as a parent? Again, if I see a student's name and there's no phone number or email address associated with it, I really need to get try to find that parent and find some contact information. Otherwise, these tools are, are certainly useless. I'm going to hit close, uh, and, and again, I'll hit close. And it's warning me that I'm leaving without actually sending it. And uh, I just wrapped up the message, and I thought of something that I left out. Um, so I've come back in, and I want to show you this again. So once you've come up here, if you've chosen voice and text, and you choose not to record a message, 
you have to be wondering, well, how's it going to be voice if we didn't record anything? Here's the answer. Uh, if you've chosen voice and you don't choose to record, Infinite Campus will, rec will read this message with a robotic voice to the recipient. So the recipient will still get a call. And it will say, this is a message from Davis County Public Schools, and then it will start your message. And it will record whatever you have written right here uh, in a computerized robotic voice in place of your recording. If you were to upload the WAV file, it will do that instead of this recording right here. Okay, hope that helps.